welcome back, Bills Red, to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial. Now today, I have before you the ultimate insane overpowered piglin bartering farm and sorter for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now this piglin bartering farm itself is crazy fast. It trades a stack of gold ingots every 16 seconds, producing around 1800 items every 40 seconds the farm is running. All of those items are therefore being sorted and stored in chest or go ahead and burned if you're not wanting to sort those actual items. Now in order to get this insane trading speed, basically what happens is anytime a block, a gold block or chest or something that the piglins usually get angered at happens with a piston, the piglins still get angered at the player for moving or breaking that, similar to if you're in a bastion and you open or loot a chest. But instead of, of course, attacking the player since they are trapped, they instantly finish their trade. But then, since there's another gold ingot on the floor, they pick up that gold ingot and then, of course, continue trading. So because we are moving this, we are simply angering them mid-trade, and that causes them to finish the trade almost instantly. This allows us to, with only three piglins, be able to trade right around four stacks of gold in just around 20 seconds. So not only is it reliable, but it's also a whole lot more efficient than, of course, having a whole bunch more piglins in there and just waiting on them to wait for the timer to actually fully extend. If you didn't want to use this bug, of course, the system could work. It would just need to be slowed down and you're going to need a whole lot more piglins and the farm just simply wouldn't be as fast. Now, while the piglins are all doing the trading, we have a bunch of hopper minecarts coming in on either side of the piglins. We have a total of 10 hopper minecarts, and each of these hopper minecarts are configured to pick up one item. This one's configured to pick up only ender pearls. The next one you can see, only quartz. The next one, only crying obsidian, and so on. This is set up for all 10 of the hopper minecarts for 10 different items, and this allows us to sort out the items very quickly. All the minecarts will start by going right under the piglins, collecting all the items it possibly can, and then they'll run all the way along here, where it will be sorted in bulk by just the use of a hopper minecart. These hopper minecarts are being unloaded at four times hopper speed, so all the items are being cleared out very quickly. And then all the hopper minecarts themselves are therefore going, are then going to be broken by a lava being clipped in between two blocks. And then that's going to be recycled and used for the next time the system runs. So for every cycle, the system just keeps going back and forth between trading with the piglins and actually sorting out all the different items. Now, in case you haven't noticed, we are in the nether. So because we are in the nether, we cannot use water streams. The best thing we could do is use ice streams, which are all right, but we are still limited to hopper speed. The reason is, if you are to use standard hoppers, the fastest one hopper can transport items is 2.5 items per second, which isn't bad. But if you get around 1,800 items every 40 seconds, then, well, one of these hoppers is not going to do it. The other option is if you just use normal hopper minecarts, then that's going to give you around 10 items transferred per second. That's four times hopper speed. But again, that's not quite fast enough for what we need to do. So instead, what I have is a clever system here that does the sorting before it even collects the items. Let me explain. How I did this is I used hopper minecarts and their instant pickup. Now, whenever the hopper minecart gets dispensed right here, it has a chest minecart right above it. In here, we have four different item filters. You can see I labeled them first, second, third, and fourth, and I used copper blocks so it's easy to visually see which one's first and which one's second. Basically, what happens is anytime the dispenser gets fired, the minecart will be held there just long enough that it can collect all four of those items before being sent on its merry way up this rail line. Now if I slow the system down a bit, just so you can see what happens, anytime the hopper gets uh, dispensed right here, it will instantly pick up those first four items. And you can see the first is in the first slot of the hopper minecart, the second's in the second, third and third, and fourth and fourth, and the fifth slot is empty. This is very important. Now once this hopper minecart gets sent on its way up this rail line, it will come right up here to the top where it has this first hopper right here. This first hopper is has uh, the five different items that this side of the sorter is sorting. So in here you can see we have gravel, soul sand, ender pearls, quartz, and crying obsidian. Now the hopper minecart is coming up with only one slot open. So if these are the first I four item filters, the fifth slot's open. It's going to pass by this 
fast enough that only one item can flow in, and that's going to be the gravel. And the gravel is going to try to go in the first slot of the hopper minecart. Since there's an item that's not gravel, it can't, and it'll try the second, third, fourth, and then it realizes it can go into the fifth. Then from here, the hopper minecart will go over this hopper, and in it, we are taking out the fourth filter item. So that means that this fourth filter item would be, have been taken out at this point. Then when it passes the next hopper, you would see it's a hopper set up the exact same way as the one beforehand. And again, only one gravel is going to be able to come out of this hopper. That is going to go in the next available slot. So we're going to try the first, it's going to try the second, it's going to try the third. And since none of those work, it's going to go in the fourth slot. Then the same thing is going to happen again. You can see we're taking out the third item filter. That's going to be this gold ingot right there. And then it's going to go to the next hopper here. And you can see here's another gravel, another hopper set up the same way. That gravel is going to try the first. It can't. It'll try the second. It can't. And it will go into the third slot. You can see if you repeat this over and over again, you will eventually get to a time that all five slots of the hopper will be completely filled with that one particular item. What we basically did is basically at the very beginning when the minecarts are completely empty and have no items in it, we are making it so that each minecart can only have one type of item in it. Because it can only have one type of item in it, we can move this hopper minecart around and use its instant pickup feature where if I throw a bunch of gold on top of this, it will instantly pick up that gold right there. So if this minecart is set up so it can only gather gravel, the next time it goes right under all these piglins after they are done trading, it will pick up all the gravel that it has been traded instantly. It will come back over these hoppers. It will replace that gravel it took. And then it will come all the way up here where we have a big item filter. It says, okay, this my cart only has gravel. It's going to go ahead and switch the rail. It's going to go ahead and unload all the gravel into these rows of double chest. And then the minecart will get broken here in a special chamber. That is basically how the system works for every single one of the different stackable items. The non-stackable items have their own way of doing things. As you might have seen here at the beginning, there was a note block being played. And that is to make the Allay actually drop their item. So right now I have the Allay set to trade all these different books. And you can see it's picking up all the Soul Sand book, all the Soul Speed books. Now all the different... Uh, non stackable items you could trade for is the soul speed books you got of course your iron boots and the fire resistant potions now it's only going to be able to sort out one of these three different non stackable items at a time so you're going to have to pick and choose which one you want but if at some point you're like i have plenty of these enchanted books i want to now get uh I want to now actually sort out my fire resistant potions then all you would really have to do is simply come in here grab a fire resistant potion and switch out what the LA is sorting for and then from now on instead of picking up all the enchanted books it's going to start picking up all the potions now because of how fast this system is running and just how many different items it produces I'm assuming you have a large gold gold supply and you're not going to need necessarily every single item so because of that I was able to take a couple shortcuts and save several resources and make the system that much faster. So because of that, there's only one LA, and that means you're going to have to choose, of course, which one of these different non stackable items you want to sort out, whether that is the fire resistance or the boots or the enchanted book. So you're going to have to choose one of the three, but of course, you can switch between them anytime you want simply by coming over here to the LA taking back and giving it an enchanted book. Now when it comes to piglin bartering, there's a lot of different items these piglins will trade for. So of course, if you give them gold, they'll give you any one of these 16 items, and it will give you various quantities of all of these. Some of them, for example, gravel and blackstone, it will give you the most, the most often, but others, for example, fire charge or ender pearls, it won't give you as much as often. So all these different items can be traded, and that's including the three different non-stackable items. If we're talking about just stackable items, there's a total of 13 different ones that the piglins will trade for. Now, because we are using the hopper mine cards for the crazy fast sorting, and I want to make the system as compact and cheap as possible, you are not actually able to sort out all the different stackable items at the same time. What I mean by this is right here, whenever the hopper mine cart comes up, it has a total of five different item slots for five different types of items you are sorting on this side, and it has a total of five different items it is sorting on this side of the item 
of the piglin birding farm because it really is two independent systems on either side working independently from each other now right there that is 10 different items that you can sort out and that remain keeps another three that you are not going to be sorting out but to me i didn't see this as a deal breaker because if you look at the amount of items that you're able to get and the amount of items you're probably going to want to keep you're probably going to want to keep any one of these top items up here but that's easily going to leave a couple items whether that is fire charges arrows leather or ender pearls that you probably don't need all of these in mass quantities like fire charges there really isn't that much use for them in the game the same with arrows if you have an infinity bow leather only has limited uses and ender pearls if you have an enderman farm they're really not that useful when it comes to piglin bartering so if you have a total of 10 options of 10 slices right here these are probably the ones you're going to want to have for your top nine but you can choose which one of these you want as your 10th item that you're sorting out the other option is, of course, after you have built this farm and run it for a couple minutes, after you've gotten all the ender pearls or arrows you want, you can simply come right down here and switch any one of these items out for a different one. If instead of ender pearls, I wanted to sort out fire charges, if I turn the system off, I can simply come to each one of these different hoppers, replace the ender pearls with a fire charge, and there... All of a sudden, instead of sorting out the ender pearls, I'm going to be sorting out the fire charges. So that is why on this, when it comes to the actual item filters, I have a total of 7 here and 6 there. So all 13 possible items. Because while I'm only sorting 10 items at one given time, I can come back later at any time and change which item I'm sorting. So even if I'm not normally sorting out fire charges, if I wanted to fire charges at a later time it's very easy to switch the system to sort out those fire charges whether you want them now or maybe later for just one project in particular that you're working on at that given time now there's only one more thing to note about this farm and that is the sorting system because we are using hopper minecarts for the unloading we simply cannot have one times hopper speed in order to unload all the items the system will produce way too many items for one times hopper speed for most of these item sorters which is why I have most of these being dual speed unload. So that means I have a hopper minecart sucking the items out of the original hopper minecart that is usually right here on this rail. And then all those are being distributed in between these two hoppers going into these two chests right here. So while it might not look like that many items are produced, they are being divided up anywhere between two and four different chests at a given time. For most of the sorters, you can use just two hoppers to sort all the items, but for the ones that are produced in the biggest quantities, that is the ones that are produced the most often, and that gives the largest amount of items at a time, at one given time, that's going to be blackstone and gravel. These need to be four times hopper speed unloaded into all these chests. If they are not have a four times hopper speed unloader, then the system will back up after around six minutes of use. So that is extremely important to have. So that's why just a couple of them have a couple extra chests. All these other ones can really work at two times hopper speed. If you want to add a four times hopper speed unloader, that's fine. But that's really just an overkill. It's not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. It would just simply give you more storage. Now, the system is directional. As you saw, might have saw at the beginning of this video, I have a sunflower here, which sunflowers always face the eastern direction. You need the back of the sorter being to the northern side of your world. The reason to this is simply when it comes to breaking the hopper mine carts with the lava. If it's facing any other directions, it is not 100% reliable on guaranteeing that the minecart will be picked up by the hopper or that the minecart won't be burned in the lava automatically. Just because of where the minecart breaks and where the items always end up, it's always going to be on the uh, northeastern direction of the block, which means that these hoppers need to be on the northeastern side of the lava source. So because of that, it needs to be faced like this. That is the one downfall of the system. The system is very directional, and if it's not having the back end of the farm in the northern direction, this farm will not work. But if you guys have any other questions or comments about this build, let me know down in the comment section below. If you need a world download or material list, both those are in the description below, along with the like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you have any other questions or comments about the build, you can always join my Discord. I'd be happy to help out there. Without further ado, let the tutorial begin. 
All right, so for this build, you are going to need a massive area cleared out for this. The other option is, of course, to build this out on the surface, but I would be extremely careful if you do this because, of course, you're probably not going to be playing with mobs turned off, so there likely will be a couple gas scattered around. So if you want to risk a gas potentially blowing up your redstone system, then you can build it out here in the open, but likely you're going to need to find an enclosed or build an enclosed area for this actual farm slash sorter. The entire size for this entire thing is it is 22 blocks wide, 19 blocks tall, and 40 blocks deep. And you can see right here is a quick diagram of the entire thing. Now the system is directional, so you do need to make sure that the back end of the system or the storage end is north of where the piglins are actually bartering from. And this is just to make sure that all the minecart mechanics work out in your favor. So now if I simply come to an open area, we can see I went ahead and pre-labeled this to try to make it easier to follow on video. The entire system, again, is 19 blocks tall, it's 22 blocks wide, and it's 40 blocks deep. And then if we come all the way here to the north side of our build, here I have where all the chests are for the actual storage. I'll explain more about the chest layout and all that stuff later, but just so you get an idea for scale of where that is in comparison to where the piglins will actually be trading. The piglins trading spot is going to be on top of this lodestone. This lodestone is where we're going to start the entire farm, so I want to centralize you and get an idea exactly where we are. So these redstone blocks mark the corners of the entire diagram, and this simply, this block right here is nine blocks away from that corner. So from that edge, there is nine blocks, and this lodestone's the tenth block. There's 12 blocks to the right, so 12 blocks, and then the lodestone's the 13th, and then there's 13 blocks below it, and that's where the bottom of our farm will be. Then if you wanna come right out here, there is a total of six blocks here before the lodestone, and this is where the player will actually be AFK, and where all the on-off switch and communications will be. And right here, I have uh, Foxy Tail's uh, resource pack to see where north is. You can also use the sunflower, since sunflowers always face the eastern direction. I know that's north, so that's where my sorting system is going to be. So this lodestone right here is where we are going to start actually building the entire farm. Now, right here, I have a lodestone. This lodestone can be any block whatsoever. Simply right on top of it is where all the piglins are going to be standing and doing all the bartering. Now, if I simply come one block down and one block to the south, right here is where we're going to have a powered rail. This powered rail is where all the minecarts will sit, rest, pick up all the items, and then head off to the sorter. Now we are going to come from there to out to one block and make an L like this. We're going to have three uh, normal rails like that. And then we're going to go ahead and place two blocks right here. And then we're going to need two temporary blocks, two solid blocks, 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 two temporary blocks, two solid blocks. Now you'll see here I'm using a lot of solid blocks here. These don't need to be solid. I will specifically mention if they need to be solid in this video. So most of the time, if you want to use glass so you can see things, you can. Or you can just use normal blocks if you want to save resources. Now all these glass blocks I place in here are temporary. And the reason is we need to put hoppers in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some more temporary blocks come out from each of those uh, temporary blocks we placed in. There should be a, a two rows of five. So five coming all the way back. Go ahead and break those temporary blocks for every single one of these. And then we're going to have a hopper, and that hopper is going to face right into those temporary blocks we just placed for every single one of these. Next, I'm going to come to the very end here. I'm going to come up two blocks just like this. I'll go ahead and fill in right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and connect a rail line using all powered rails all right here on this side. And that's going to connect to that normal rail. And since these two rails are connected, they shouldn't disconnect when I put another set of powered rails right here. And this I'm going to come all the way up and just one before. If I go all the way up, then these two rails are going to connect. And that can cause issues later. So just keep it stag staggered just like this to begin with. Now we can go ahead and remove all these temporary blocks we placed in earlier. All right, next we're going to come all the way back here to where we have our piglin bartering spot. I'm going to come right out here to the side. I'm going to come out two blocks and in two blocks just like that. I'll come up one, break that lower one. Here we'll have a powered rail and two normal rails. Now these rail will uh, converge to this normal rail 
We don't want that to happen. So for now, I'm simply going to have a temporary two powered rails like that. That way they stay separate. And then I can have a lever on this block to go ahead and power that rail. Now if we come along to the other side, we want to do the same thing, uh, but it needs to be one block further. So we're going to come two blocks, one more, and then come in and then have a solid block right there. We'll have a powered rail there, powered rail there, and two normal rails, and we can power both of those powered rails with levers just like that. Now that all these rails are in place and we're not going to touch them again, we can go ahead and break that temporary rail we placed in earlier. And then we're going to go ahead and place a fence on top of this rail right here. I would go ahead and recommend using the nether woods since these are not flammable. If fire spread or fire tick is turned off in your world, then you can use any type of fence gate. But if fire tick is on, make sure you use a nether wood so it doesn't accidentally burn at a later point. Now you can either use glass or solid blocks here. I'm going to use glass that way I can see what I'm doing easier. And for here, it would be smart to use glass. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this up. And this entire tube needs to be six blocks tall. So right there, there's four, and I'll come up two more. And that would make this entire thing six blocks tall. Now, the side that's leading out, I'm going to go ahead and make only five blocks tall, just like that. And I'm going to come to the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. So fence gate that is non-flammable. I'm going to go ahead and put row of glass blocks around it. And then I'm just going to extend this all the way up until the entire column is six blocks tall. And then once it's six blocks tall, I'm going to see this side is facing out. So I'll break that one right there. Now what we just built here is the two hopper minecart silos where all the hopper minecarts are stored. Now in order to get the hopper minecarts up there, we're going to need to have a rail line. So I'm going to come down a total of three blocks here on this left hand side one. It's going to come out another two blocks, curve around, and then it's going to come down some more. Just like this down till it's right underneath that block right there and that's going to come all the way in till it is right up against this normal rail right there now i can go ahead and put a powered rail here and uh, put some normal rails right here coming all the way up the line we'll curve around you need another powered rail and then normal rails all the way up to the top and we can use a redstone torch to power that rail this rail down here should already be powered due to this lever that we placed in earlier and now we're going to do the same sort of thing over here on the right side. So we're going to come around. We're going to go ahead and have three blocks come straight down like this. Then it's going to come out another two blocks, curve around, and then it's going to come down another three or four blocks until it gets right underneath where that lever is. And then it's going to come all the way in until it's level or right up against that block. Powered rail there, and then normal rails coming all the way up and around. Powered rail and then normal rails all the way up to the top. And we can go ahead and power that with a lever. Next, we're going to come all the way down this rail line we just placed, and we're going to go ahead and finish this coming all the way across. Now we're going to have two blocks. We need a temporary block, a block, a temporary block, a block, a temporary block, a block, a temporary block, and two more blocks. So there should be a total of four of those temporary blocks, and then you're going to need another set of temporary blocks along with each of those. Now, you can break the first temporary blocks we placed on each of these. You can go ahead and grab your hoppers and have those hoppers facing into each of those temporary blocks. Now, you can go ahead and break those temporary blocks. And then we are going to go ahead and put the exact same thing on the other side. So that means we're going to need to go ahead and put two blocks, a temporary block, a block, a temporary block, a block, a temporary block, a block, a temporary block, and two blocks. Then we're going to need four more temporary blocks right like that. Come along, break the first one, and put a hopper. And then you can break the four temporary blocks. So once this is done, both sides should look something like this. Now it is time to put rails on each of these. So I'm going to have a normal rail here at the beginning. And then I'm going to have pad rails coming all the way back here. All the way back. And then we can go ahead and place one more block here with a normal rail. And then coming over to the other side, we're going to do the same thing. But to make it easier, we're actually going to start from this back end and then put powered rails coming all the way in. The reason is, as soon as we get here and we put a powered rail there, these, this powered rail is going to connect and make a weird line like this. Due to rail magic, what we're going to do is put a normal rail and then a powered rail. And then we can put the powered rail back up top. And then all the rails should cooperate from there. Now we do need to power all four of these powered rails. I find the easiest way is just to use two redstone blocks. 
Or if you want to save redstone, you can just have a solid block with a redstone lever on top of it like that. And both those options will power those rails. But the redstone blocks look a little bit more visually appealing and they're a lot more convenient. All right, so our next step is going to be to put in the redstone to actually set up each of the hopper minecarts correctly. That is what all these hoppers here are set up or made to do. Now, we're gonna start by grabbing our hoppers and we're gonna come here and we're gonna come left of our first hopper, have a hopper going straight down and then a hopper going right into that. We'll do the same thing to the next one. We're gonna do this for all four of these. So one going straight down, one going into the side, straight down, one to the side, just like that. Then we are going to have a solid block right here. We'll have a comparator coming out from that block. That's going to go straight into a solid block. It's going to come down two blocks right here. Break these two temporary blocks. Redstone dust on each of those. Then we're going to have a temporary block, two blocks right there. Break that block. We'll have a repeater right here. And then we'll have a redstone torch right there. Now, right like this, I have a simple item filter. Now, in this very first one, right here, we need to grab our very first item filters that we are using. So I'm going to use copper. That way, in the screen, it's visually very easy to see which phase is first, second, third, and fourth. Go ahead, and if you haven't done so already, find four different items. And I would also rename those items to one, two, three, and four. That way, you get this order correct. If this order is not correct, your system will break and it's gonna be a pain to fix. So make sure you put this in right. In this very first hopper here, you're gonna to wanna to have the very first one and you're gonna have four, uh, some other filter item that's not any of these four different types of items. That will leave 18 in there and in the hopper that we have facing straight down, there should be two of these items. If that works correctly, then you can go on to the next one and you can go ahead and set up the next item filter. You're gonna have an item filter for every single one of these and you're going to also have an item filter and same setup for every single one over here. But I'm going to go ahead and finish showing how to do this one. And then it's really just the exact same design just flipped over on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly make the rest of these item filters. And now that I have all my item filters built, I can go ahead and go to the second one. So the second one to the left, the first one has our first item filter. Our second one's going to have our second one with again, four filter items in the other four slots. Then we'll go to the third one. Our third one's gonna have 21 of our third type of item. And then we can go ahead and put the filter item in and then come to our fourth, our fourth one. And this is technically gonna be the first one the Hopper Minecart comes to. And this is gonna have our fourth item uh, that we are using as a filter item. Now on the opposite side, you're gonna build of course the exact same thing the only thing that's different is a couple things are flipped. For example, when it comes to these hoppers, we want the hopper facing straight down to be on the right side instead of the left side. So they should look the exact same. They should be symmetrical. And then you're going to have one hopper going into that. So it should be exactly symmetrical or kind of opposite of the other one. And then the same thing goes for the filter items. In the first one or the furthest to the right, the one closest to the piglins uh, trading and bartering station, you're going to have your first one with your item filter set up. Then on the second one or second furthest way, you'll have your second filter item. Third one, third, and fourth one, fourth. All right, so now I'm going to come to my left rail line, come right below it. And underneath these hoppers, come down two blocks, and you can break that first. Then here I'm going to have a line of blocks coming all the way back to where our, uh, our back end of the hopper is. So just like that. Now I'm using glass blocks here, and that's just so I can more easily see the redstone and what I'm doing. But solid blocks here would work just fine. Now you can make a little bit of an L shape or a corner right there, then come down. This down is going to come all the way over. Once you come here, so this means you're level with this back hopper, you're going to have a redstone block here. You come back two blocks, and then right here you'll come down and then connect it with that lower part. Then you're going to have a powered rail here, a powered rail here, normal rails all right there and then you'll have powered rails that will just extend from down here all the way to the end it's going to come up to two normal rails and then powered rails all the way over to this end and if you need to break this normal rail just like that your rail should come along just like this and then on top of this rail put a fence gate 
And again, if you have fire tick on, then you're going to want some sort of nether wood fence gate so it doesn't burn on you. Now we're going to build the same thing on this side. It just, of course, flipped. So that's going to be same sort of deal coming down right here, down one. Make that corner. And this corner is going to come all the way along here once it gets to the end. Come up one block straight right like this. Then I'm going to have two... Uh, I'm going to have two normal rails and then powered rails all along the edge. Three normal rails, a powered rail, normal rail, and then powered rails coming all the way along the bottom. Now, if we want to simulate to see how the system would work, basically on each of these, there's going to be a minecart chest. And this fence gate is going to catch them. Whenever this fence gate gets opened and closed relatively quickly, the minecart will go on its path. And if you look inside it, it now has one of each of the different types of filter items. We have the first, second, third, fourth and they should be in that correct order. You can try this out for both of them, and they should both get the exact same filter items in this same order. This is where our hopper minecart underneath is going to collect them and then go up to the top in order to be configured properly. So this is extremely important, and just make sure that the, your first time running it, it gives one of each. Now, because there is more than just one of each type of filter item, you see we got one more right in this hopper. If you accidentally open this fence gate any time while building this or accidentally trigger the system while in the middle of building this uh, sorter, then, of course, it will grab the second one. So if it's like this, don't worry about it, and I'll remind you to reset the system properly before we actually turn the entire farm on. So once again, I'm going to start on the left-hand side. I'm going to come straight down from where we have this angled powered rail. I'm going to come down two blocks from there, and then I'll come down another two. You can break those first three temporary blocks. Then you need an upward-facing dropper, an upward-facing dispenser. Make sure the bottom one's the dropper and the top one's the dispenser, and then a powered rail right on top of that. Now, in each of these, uh, in the dropper and in the dispenser, you're going to want to have nine hopper minecarts, so that's going to be a total of 18 on this side, and there's going to be another 18 on this side when we get around to building the right-hand side. Now, I'm going to start by having a block here to the right, and then I'll have an upward-facing slab right here to the left and then a normal rail like this. Now this will allow us to have easy access in the dispenser anytime we need to bug or just make sure that the system is working properly. So that's why we're using a slab right there. Now if I come around to the other side, I'm gonna have a solid block right there. Come back two blocks, you can break that first, and then here you're gonna have a repeater on one tick. Then I'll come back another two blocks. Here I'm gonna have two repeaters, first one on four ticks, second one on two ticks. Then I'm going to come right down to the dropper. I'm going to go ahead and break the temporary block. Have a block right here next to that dropper. Come down two blocks, over one, and down one. I'm going to break that block and that block. Here you'll have a redstone torch. Here you'll have a repeater on one tick. Then from this block, we'll come up. We'll have a redstone torch and a block. And then from this block, we'll have another redstone torch. That's going to come up a block. One more redstone torch on the inside of a block. And then we'll have normal redstone dust, and that's going to power straight into a block. And that this redstone dust, whenever that's powered, is what's going to open up this fence gate. Now if I come straight down to where we have our repeater, I'm going to come up right to a block. And then this is simply going to connect to a redstone line, and it's going to connect all our repeaters together. And this top repeater is not going to be connected, and that's going to get connected eventually to a redstone torch that's going to be right here. But I don't want to place this quite yet. Now we're going to take this entire system here and mirror it to the other side. And once you have it all built up, it should look something like this. Now, in order to power all these, we want these to power in a certain cycle, and we want just a pulse to go through it. Now we can do this with an observer, but those aren't necessarily the most reliable thing. So I built something else that's going to give a little bit of a longer pulse that's more reliable and constant. So how I'm doing that is I'm going to have three bits of redstone dust there. I'm going to have a block coming up and out. You can go ahead and break that block. Then right here, you're going to have a repeater on one tick. Then from here, I'm going to have a temporary block come down one, out one block, break the temporary block, and there you'll have a repeater on four ticks. And then we'll have a redstone torch on the side of that coming straight up to a block. So this redstone line should be powered. If you want to see how the system works, basically anytime this lever right here gets flicked, that will turn that's this, the redstone line off for a little bit. And then when it gets turned off, nothing happens. So it's a, only a, it's a monostable circuit right there. Now from this redstone line, we are going to have two redstone torches here. You'll hear those fence gates get powered, 
and these rails will have gotten powered too. Now, we also want at least one of these torches to power this redstone line. Since it's all connected, it doesn't matter which one does. I'm going to make it so this side does. So I'm just going to move this bit of redstone dust up. Now, whenever this torch turns on, it not only will power this repeater, but also this repeater right here, and also those two repeaters right down there. Now that we've gotten this monostable circuit done right here, it is time to actually build up the timer or slash counter, and that's going to make sure that we get exactly five hopper mine cards produced or set up, categorized, however you want to phrase it, every single time. And it's also going, and that long pulse is actually going to go right into this monostable circuit, which is going to turn into a short pulse. Now, while we're building this, we don't want to accidentally break the system, so I'm just going to go ahead and use a redstone block to temporarily lock this redstone line permanently on. That's going to keep this system permanently off and make sure that no hopper mine carts or real powering or anything like that happens while I'm in the middle of the building process. From this block that the redstone torch is coming out of, I'm going to come out one block, and then I'm going to come right down two blocks diagonally, just like this, and I'm going to have three bits of redstone dust. Then I have a redstone block on the bottom one. Then to the right, I'm going to go ahead and have a normal piston pushing in. And then I'm going to come right over to the left and have another piston facing in the other way. I'm then going to grab my hoppers, and I'm going to have two hoppers facing directly into each other right here. And in one of these hoppers, you can go ahead and put in four of any item you want. It doesn't matter. Basically, what we're building here is an etho hopper clock, and this is simply going to trigger or operate the entire system. So you need two comparators and then two solid blocks with redstone dust on top. And this is going to start a long clock process or a relatively short clock process. It's going to go back and forth and trigger this line. Now this etho hop clock is going to keep on going back and forth and that's going to keep triggering this line. Just for now, I'm going to temporarily permanently lock this line on. Now this line is going to go straight into a solid block and then we're going to have a dropper facing to the left with a hopper going directly into that. Now in this dropper, I'm going to go ahead and throw five of any item you want in it. Doesn't matter. I'll put a solid block on top of that hopper and a repeater here on one tick. Then from this dropper, I'm going to come down one block. Go ahead and break that top one. Here I have a comparator. The comparator is going to go straight into a solid block with a redstone torch to the side. This redstone torch is going to be powering right a dropper to the side. Then I'm going to come back two blocks, break that first. And then I'm going to have another dropper facing in and you can break the other temporary block. Then go ahead and in this right dropper or the one next to this torch, go ahead and throw in one of any item you want, doesn't matter. Then come right down below, two blocks, break that first, and then here you're gonna have a comparator. What we did right here is basically whenever this dropper becomes completely empty, that's going to power this dropper and it's going to push the item into this dropper and that's going to permanently lock this system or permanently extend this piston regardless whether this comparator is powering or this comparator is not. Then right on top of this torch we're going to have a solid block, come out to one more solid block, redstone dust on each of those blocks, we'll have a redstone torch here to the side, then we'll come out here, we'll have a block here with a repeater on one tick, then we'll have a block right here to the side, another repeater on one tick, and that repeater is going to be powering straight into a block, and right below it we'll have a bit of redstone dust. Now if I simply put a lever right here temporarily and turn it on, I can come over here and remove my temporary lever that was permanently locking the etho hopper clock on. Now that I've done that, I can then turn this off, and we should basically see that this redstone block is going to go back and forth a total of five times. And this is just all due to redstone mechanics and having a simple counter or clock right here that's counting the time. And then the etho hopper clock count holding how long to hold each time frame. And then afterwards, it locks itself per permanently until this redstone line turns on for a certain amount of time and then turns off. And then the system will count to five all over again. Now once the timer or counter that we just built actually activates and fires or dispenses each one of those minecarts, we want them to have a place to go. So from here, we're going to come out one block from that rail line, then we'll come up two blocks just like this. It's going to curve around and then going to keep coming directly up until it connects to our railroad line up here. Then you have normal rails coming straight down, we'll have a powered rail there, two normal rails, two more powered rails, and then a normal rail. And then you can power these three powered rails with a simple lever right here. And that should power all three of those. Then coming around to the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing. So come out two blocks, up one, 
and then up one more. We're going to curve around, come out one, and then we're going to just come straight up and make a little staircase all the way up to the top. Normal rails coming straight down. One powered rail, two normal rails, two powered rails, and then a normal rail. And then you can go ahead and use a lever to power all those rails just like that. All right, so now that we have the actual categorizer done, basically anytime the minecarts are dispensed, they will come to these item silos. And then once further redstone gets done, that will send them on their merry way, either on the left or right hand side. Now we're going to start on the left hand side, so make sure you're with me. The minecarts would come right along this rail right here, and then it's going to come right up here. I'm going to go ahead and temporarily break that rail. So right here, we're going to have a normal rail. Then it's going to come here to the left, one block, and then it's going to come up another two blocks, just like this. We'll have a detector rail, a normal rail, and a normal rail, just like that. Then it's going to come out one more block with a powered rail. And then we're going to actually have where our item filters are. So that means we're going to have a hopper in the side of the block, then a solid block, hopper, solid block. And this uh, can be a solid or glass block. It doesn't matter. Now on this side, we are going to have a total of six different options. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then we need one more. So that's the sixth. Then it's going to come out one more block. Then it's going to come down two blocks just like this. It's going to come down one more right like there. Then we're going to make a quick turn just like this. It's going to come down one more block, and then it's going to come and curve right around. And it's going to come in a straight line just like this all the way to the actual end of our system. So right there. Now if I come straight up to the top, we can go ahead and put in powered rails right along the top all the way to the end. Then when you get to the final hopper, you can stop and you can put normal rails curving their way all the way down and around to this undercarriage side. Now these two rails might connect, so you might have to re-break this rail in order to get it to connect to go this way. Now we're going to stop on rails there because the next part of the rails gets a little bit more complicated and actually build the sorters themselves. Now the sorters themselves is pretty simple. We're going to simply come down one block right here. Here we'll have a comparator. That comparator is going to power straight into a block and then we're going to have two bits of redstone dust that it powers on a downhill slant just like this. Now from here we're simply going to come out one block. Then you're going to grab your repeater. You're going to have a repeater here on one tick. And that's going to come straight up. And then we're going to have a redstone torch right here. And that is going to be powering a locked hopper facing into that block right there. Not facing straight down, facing into that block. So it should look something like this when it's all said and done. And then there's one more thing you're going to need to add. You're going to need to grab a dropper. And you're going to need two droppers. One dropper facing down. And then you're going to need one dropper facing up right here, just like that. In the top dropper, you're going to want to put one of any stackable item you don't care about. And then from the bottom one, you're simply going to come out one block, have a comparator. That comparator is going to have a redstone torch. And this redstone torch is going to be on the inside or facing the actual uh, piglin barding farm portion of it. That's where the redstone torch is facing. Have a block, have another redstone torch, have a block here, and have a repeater. Now this repeater is going to be powering a normal rail. The reason this repeater is powering a normal rail is because this normal rail it has the option to turn. We are going to have a powered rail here, and here it is turning, but it also is going to have an option of continue going straight. And anytime this gets powered, if I simply break that torch, you should see that normal rail switch back and forth, just depending on whether it's powered or not. Now that is how each one of these different item sorters is going to work. So every other one, you're going to need a normal rail, and another normal rail coming out, and then you can get a powered rail. So two normal rails coming out, and then a powered rail, and we're going to repeat this uh, as many times as we have sorters, so that means we're needing a total of six of these for this one side. So it should look something like this. Then I'm going to come right around to the other side, and this simple item filter that we made, we are going to repeat another five times, one for each one of these hoppers we placed in earlier. Now, once you have all your different slices put together, your system should look something like this. Now, we will work on setting all these up and double checking to make sure they work in a moment. But first, we want to finish putting in the rest of the redstone for this half of the system. So I'm going to come right to our detector rail right here. And I'm going to make a little bit of a TP. So coming straight up to, along the rail line. And I'm going to come straight down just like this. I'm going to come down one block further. Just like that. 
and we'll have a redstone line coming straight up. What we are building is basically every time the minecart comes over this detector rail, we want it to power every single one of the bottom droppers all along this line. Basically what that is doing is that is resetting the system or resetting the sorter so we know that the next minecart that is coming through is a new minecart and one that we haven't already seen or sorted earlier. So what you're going to need is continue this line all the way out here like this and it's going to connect all the way to the bottom of every single one of our droppers. These should be solid blocks and we'll have a redstone dust line coming all the way down. Then you can have a solid block, repeater, solid block, and two bits of redstone dust. And then you can go ahead and break those two extra blocks like that and that green system is completely done. All right, so our next step would typically be to put in the unloaders for the hopper minecarts. But because of rail mechanics and all that stuff, it's actually better for us to put in the hopper minecart return line before we build the unloaders. Even though it seems backwards, it will make your life so much easier in the long run. So that's what we're going to do first instead. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the left side, and then I'll show you how to do the right side because they're both slightly different. We're going to start right down here where we have our, dis our dropper and dispenser. We're going to have a hopper go into that dropper, and then we're going to come out seven blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're going to come up two blocks just like this, and you can have one more block right here. Then you're going to have a line of 15 upper slabs, and then you're going to come back two blocks. This needs to be a solid block. You can go ahead and power this, and then you need a powered rail, normal rails all the way along to the end, and then you can go ahead and put powered rails coming straight back. And then when you get two away, have a normal rail and a powered rail, just like that. And then right on top of this powered rail, you can go ahead and grab a chest minecart. This chest minecart is going to go back and forth constantly, collecting all your hopper minecarts and bringing them back to the system to be recycled for the next time you have are using the farm. Now for uh, the right side where we actually have the sorter built, it's a little different. So we're going to have, again, a hopper, powered rail. Then we're going to come out and make a little bit of a square right here. Normal rail, normal rail, normal rail, powered rail. And then we're going to come up one block like this. Come up one more. Then we're going to come back another two blocks. Go ahead and power rails on each of these. And if some weird stuff like this happens, break that rail, place it again. You should get two slant, three up here. Then we're going to come place a temporary block, have an upward slab, and then have a normal rail. And you can go ahead and break that temporary block. Then we're going to extend this, so it's a total of 13. So there's one. So that's going to be two blocks shorter than that side. Then we're going to simply come and have two blocks out from there. Go ahead and power this. Have a powered rail. And then normal rails coming all the way back. And then same sort of deal. Go ahead and grab a chest minecart and place that right on top of this powered rail. Make sure that you place this on the lower powered rail where we just placed and not on the powered rail that's right above the dispenser. That one right there is going to constantly have hopper minecarts placed, so you don't want to have anything in that way. Now that we've gotten the hopper minecart return lines, it is time to build the hopper minecart unloaders. So I want to come right to our right side where we already have the sorter built, and I'm going to come straight down from here, and here we got our original rail. Now I'm going to use a lot of glass blocks when it comes to this unloader. The reason is, if anything goes wrong, it is very easy to see what's happening. It's also pretty cool to watch. You don't have to use glass blocks for the most part, but I will specify the one point you do need to use glass blocks. So just pay attention to that if you're going to use solid blocks instead. So from this rail, I'm going to come out two blocks. Then I'm going to go ahead and from this rail, count down four blocks. So one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to come in one block, in one more block like this. Then I'm going to have a fence right here. And then if I come down straight from there, I have a downward facing hopper, have a nether fence right here, and I have another, another downward facing hopper. Now I'm going to go ahead and place in two temporary blocks, and have two more downward facing hoppers just like that. You can break those first two. And now we're going to go ahead and place a temporary block. Go ahead and put a rail line in. You might need to redirect it like this. Then go ahead and grab your hopper minecart. Have one hopper minecart come straight in like this. And then you're going to want to nudge this. That way it is in between all four of those hoppers. And if it, you push it all the way up against those two fences, that is perfectly fine. Now if I was to throw any items in this, it would unload the items at four times hopper speed. So if I give this an even 32, you should see four items be removed all at the same time. 
and that is being evenly distributed between all four of these hoppers. Once you have done that, we need to put an upper slab right in the spot that this hopper minecart is. So I'm going to have a temporary piston right here, and that piston is going to push that straight down. I'm just going to grab a redstone block to power that real quick. Right there. And then you can go ahead and replace that piston with a normal block. Now if I simply come directly back up, you can have a detector rail, a powered rail, then come out one more block, up one with a redstone block, and have another powered rail just like this. This power rail is going to come right on into a block. And then these blocks down here need to be all glass that I'm about to place. You're going to need to grab a normal hopper. These normal hoppers is going to go straight on into this rail line we placed earlier. And that should be in the same plane as this redstone block. Then we're going to go ahead and create a square right here. You're going to grab your normal rails. You're going to have a normal rail in the middle. And then we want it to be turned this direction. So I'm going to have one rail on either side. Once you have done that, you can break those two rails, and you can have two bits of glass blocks right there. Now, you don't need these blocks underneath, but it's not going to hurt them to have them, so it's up to you whether you want to break these or not. Now, the one other thing that's left to do here is you need to have a lava source, and this lava source is going to be right here. But I'm going to hold off before doing that. The reason is, one, of course, lava makes a mess and flows really fast in the nether. The other reason is when you have to do more than one slice, the next slice is going to have a hopper system right here. And then you're going to need to do the same thing and have another one of these curved rail lines. But if you have your lava source right here, when you try to do that, that has a potential chance of actually breaking your rail line you have right here. So instead, just leave an empty hole and make a nice, easy containment wall around it. That way we know this is where the lava needs to go. And once you have all the different unloaders done, then you're good to go back and put in all your different lava sources. And then, of course, when, after you put those lava sources in, just make sure to put a lid on them to make sure you don't accidentally fall inside it. Now, before doing that, of course, I'm going to finish this side up. Now, this is where the minecart is breaking, and we want to make sure that the minecart breaks and goes directly into the hopper. So you're going to want to put some walls to this entire thing, and I'm just going to use the glass right here. It's going to come all the way up and around it three blocks up then right here you need to grab your fence gate you need a fence gate right there on that powered rail and this detector rail needs to be angled so I'm going to bring that up one block and then you can go ahead and replace it with a solid block then I'm going to quickly grab my comparators torch and repeaters I'm going to have a repeater right here on four ticks that's going straight into a solid block then on top of the solid block I'm going to have a comparator that comparator is going to go straight into a solid block I'm going to have a redstone torch right underneath that block, redstone torch on that block, and then come up one more block to the side and have another redstone torch. That redstone torch is going to go directly into a piece of redstone dust. That's going to go directly into a solid block, and then we'll have a redstone torch to the side. Now, what this system we just did is basically regardless whether the minecart is full of items or not, it will sit there long enough to unload all its potential items, and then the minecart will be sent on its way here to get destroyed by the lava source. The only thing really left to do here is to go ahead and contain the minecart. So that would mean putting walls right around here just to make sure the minecart is stuck. You don't need walls in this area or this area to the side because of course the minecart's gonna be stuck on the track. But if you want to put some more blocks right on the inside here, you're fine doing that. Just make sure there's room for you to put the lava source in later. And then of course, make sure to put a lid on that when you are done of course, placing that lava source. Now you are going to repeat these exact same steps another five times for every single one of these other item filters that you have here on the right side. Now, just to make it easier, I'm gonna go ahead and show it how to do it one more time here on camera, but a little bit faster. So here I have my normal rail. I'm gonna come out to two blocks. Then from the normal rail, I'm gonna count down four blocks. One, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna come out to the side. Then I'm gonna grab my fences, come two fences out. I'm going to have two downward facing hoppers, then I'm going to go have two temporary blocks right there, and have two more downward facing hoppers. Then I'm going to go ahead and break these two temporary blocks, I'm going to come out one block right here, go ahead and place some rail, grab a hopper minecart, and chuck it right on in. Now this hopper minecart needs to be aligned between all four of those hoppers, so I'm just going to quickly nudge it in, and if you nudge it too far you can push it back, and then just go ahead and throw a couple items in the hopper minecart just to make sure it is unloading at four times hopper speed. 
Now we do still need to put an upper slab right here. So I'm going to go ahead and have a downward facing piston. And I don't even need to power that because this redstone dust right here is powering that straight down. Now I'll have a repeater right here on four ticks. Go ahead and put a block right back there. I'll have a detector rail, solid block, redstone block, two uh, powered rails. Then go ahead and grab my fence gate. Have that right here. Going to angle this detector rail straight up like this. Go ahead and put that block right back. And coming right down here, I'm going to grab my hopper. Have that going directly into this normal rail. Have a normal rail right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and make this little square. Then I'm going to angle this normal rail to the right back. Go ahead and break those two temporary rails. Go ahead and fill in this area around. And go ahead and make a containment area for the lava source to be right here. And at this point, if you want to, you can go ahead and grab your lava source and place that for the previous one right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put walls around this minecart breaker area. And then I'm going to come straight to the back. And from this repeater, that repeater is going to go straight into a solid block. Here, I'm going to have a comparator. That comparator is going to go straight into a block. I'll have two redstone torches right there. Coming up one more block. I have another redstone torch right there. Come out to one block here. You're going to need another piece of redstone dust. That's going to go straight into a solid block with a redstone torch right here on the inside. And that will power on and off this fence gate. Then all that's left to do is to go ahead and add walls to the entire thing to make sure the minecarts always go straight down in each of these categories. Now that we've done two of these together, it is time for you to do the exact same thing to the other four of these item sorters. Now, once you have built all six of those hopper minecart unloaders and slash breakers, that's going to destroy them when they're done. This entire slice over here is almost complete. Now, we are going to finish them both at the exact same time. So at this point, we are going to stop on the right hand side and go ahead and build the left hand side or the other side that we haven't worked on yet. Now, this side is going to be basically the exact same thing, but instead of flipping it, we are simply going to repeat this design over here. So we're not even mirroring it, we're simply repeating it. The reason is this simple hopper minecart breaker will only work in this one orientation. If you are to turn this or rotate it or mirror it, it will not work, which is why when it comes to each of these two sides, they are not a mirrored image like everything else in this farm and sorter is. So if we're going to start off right here, from here, we're going to have a normal rail and we're going to come up two blocks just like this, just like the other side did. We'll have normal rails all the way up. Then here we'll have our activator rail and then we'll come out another two blocks right here and then we'll come in one block with a powered rail. From this powered rail, we are going to do the same thing we did over there, except we are going to put the second half. Now, since uh, piglins can produce a total of 13 different items, and we have six sorters on that side, that means we're going to need seven on this side. So, here's my first sorter. Seventh, I'll come one more block. And then I'm going to come down two blocks, just like I did earlier. Then I'm going to curve right around, come down one more block, curve right around, and then have a straight beeline all the way back to where I started from, all the way back here. Now, I'm going to have powered rails along the top of all of these. And then when I get to the top of the final hopper, then I'm going to switch to normal rails coming all the way down, curving around and in. And then if this rail curves like this, just replace that, just like that. Then underneath the hopper, you're going to have a powered rail, and then you need normal rail, coming straight out like this. Then you need a powered rail, and then you're gonna need two normal rails like this. You're gonna need another powered rail, and then you're gonna need two normal rails like this. And you should have a total of 70 sticking out when you make it all the way to the very end. Then you're gonna do the boring repetitive task of building seven more of these item filters. So if you forget how to do that, it's all right, I'll show you how to do it one more time. You're simply gonna come straight down from here. You're gonna have a comparator. This comparator is going straight into a solid block. Come out one and down one block like this. Two bits of redstone dust. Then I'm going to come down one block here. Go ahead and put two blocks off the side of that. Break that middle. Here you're going to have a repeater on one tick and a redstone torch. Then off the back side of this, you're going to have a downward facing dropper. Put a temporary block, an upward facing dropper, just like that. Then go ahead and break your temporary block. Go down one block, have an inward-facing comparator. In the top dropper, 
go ahead and put some sort of item you don't care about. For example, here's a stick. I'm never going to see that item again. Then I'm going to have a redstone torch that's going to go on the inside or closest towards where the actual piglins are going to be. Then I'm going to come up one block, have another redstone torch. You're going to have a repeater here on one tick. And then you're going to grab your hoppers and you have one hopper going directly into that block right there. Now right there, that's how you build one of these simple item filters. Now you need to do it another six times for every single one of these hoppers. Now once you have finished building the item filters, it should look something like this. Now one thing to note, depending on how you built this, whether you follow this exactly how I did to begin with, your system could result with a lot of the rails pointing the wrong direction, even though as soon as you activate it once, it will change the direction. So one thing I would recommend is going through and breaking and then replacing these torches. And I would do this for this other sort of over here as well too, if the, your rails are not facing the direction you are seeing right here. This direction you're seeing on screen is the correct orientation. You can see over here, these three are not. The This is extremely important, and only after you do one cycle of your system sorting items would it have actually fixed itself, and by then you would have probably assumed your system was broken somehow, even though it just fixed itself. So, long story short, just make sure all your rails are pointing the same direction, like shown here, and if you're ever not certain, just go through and quickly power each one of these real quick. Then I'm going to come right over to my detector rail, and I need to hook my detector rail up to the bottom of every single one of these droppers. So how I'm going to do that is if I come to my detector rail, I'm going to come down one block, have a redstone dust there. I'm going to come to the left, down one. Here I'm going to have a repeater on one tick. That repeater is going straight into a redstone dust. And if I come around to the other side, from this redstone dust, we need to have another block and redstone dust. Now from here, we need to have two target blocks, one target block there, and one target block here. These target blocks is to, one, increase the speed, and also to change the orientation of that redstone dust. We need this redstone dust after one tick to power this bottom dropper. If it doesn't, then this one slice here will not work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a redstone signal. We got this target block, which is redirecting the redstone dust to this block. So we're going to have a repeater coming from that. And then we can go ahead and replace this uh, glass block here. So whenever this minecart comes in, it will still hit the block and go down, even though there's an air block there. Then we can have a solid block there, because that's going to power that bottom uh, dropper again, which doesn't matter. As long as it powers it once, that's what's important. Then it's going to come up one, and then it's going to come down and power that one. Up one, it's going to come down. And the reason we're coming up is if we just went in a straight line, then the hopper minecart would just go and land partially on this block, which is not what we want. So instead, you have to kind of make this weird zigzag pattern going up and down for every single one of these. And then when you get to the end, since there's nothing, you can just go in a straight line if you want, and then just get some redstone dust along all of this. Now, every time that detector rail is powered, that will power all those bottom droppers, and every time this detector rail is powered, it will power all of those bottom droppers. Now coming right back over to the item sorter we haven't finished yet, we need to go ahead and put in the hopper minecart unloader. Now, I've already shown how to do this twice, but I'll go ahead and show it how to do it one more time here, just for old times sake. So I'm going to come out uh, one block straight out from this rail. Then I'm going to come down total four blocks, so one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to come in one block right there, come in one more. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a fence right there, and a fence right there, two downward facing hoppers then two temporary blocks, and two downward-facing hoppers. You can go ahead and break those two temporary blocks, come out two blocks, and go ahead and place in two temporary rails. Now you need to grab your hopper minecarts, and you need to have one hopper minecart right on in there. You can break those temporary blocks, and you need to make sure that is right in between all four of those hoppers. Just like that. If it's too far one direction, it doesn't really matter, but just get it like roughly in the middle. And if you want to test it, just give it four items, or just, if you want to test it, just give it, like, a stack of items and see whether it is emptying at four times hopper speed. And since four items are removed all at the same time, then I know that means that all four hoppers are sucking an equal amount of items out. And you can also just, like, you know, see if they all have the exact same amount of items in each of those hoppers when you're done. Both options work. 
So from here, I need an upper slab in the block that the minecart is in. So I'm going to go ahead and have a downward facing piston push that slab into place, just like that. And I'll have a repeater right there on four ticks. Now I'll go ahead and replace that block that we use the piston for. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a detector rail and a powered rail. I'm going to have a detector rail here and then two powered rails, one there and one coming up on top of redstone block. And that's going to hit a glass block right here. And then it's going to come down and we're going to have a hopper facing directly into this normal rail. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a quick 2x2 two two box of glass blocks. Then I want my rail that's sitting right here to be angled this direction. It's going to have two rails right here temporarily just to move that. Go ahead and put glass blocks in each of those places. And just contain this area. This is where we're going to have lava in the future. And I'm going to go ahead and contain this area to make sure that whenever the minecart breaks, it has to go into that hopper. And then coming right back to this back end, where we are going to go ahead and put a solid block right there. Go ahead and grab a comparator. This comparator is going straight into a solid block. We'll have a torch right under that. Another redstone torch on the side. Come up one more block. One more redstone torch. Solid block right there. Then go ahead and grab a bit of a redstone dust. That's going straight into another solid block. Here we'll have another redstone torch. Then you're going to go ahead and grab a fence gate. Fence gate's going right here. And then this detector rail needs to be at an angle, just like that. Now you're going to want to go ahead and finish the tube. So that's going to basically contain whenever the minecart comes in, it has to go straight down. So we're going to go ahead and do that right here real quick, just to make sure that that hopper minecart has to go straight down. And then when it gets here, it's going to have to go forward. You need to do this exact same system another six times for all those other different item filters. And then of course, once you've done them, then you can go ahead and put the lava source in right here and put a cap right on top of that. And after a little bit of work, you should have 13 of these hopper minecart unloaders and breakers. Seven on this side and six on this side, which we already did together. And then we just did these seven. Now there's a couple more things we gotta do with this stuff before we are done. The first thing is, of course, when the minecart's coming along, it needs to be on powered rails that are actually powered. So using either a lever or redstone block, make sure to power these rails up on top. Now the second thing we need to do has to do with luck based. Since bartering with piglins is all luck based, even after trading four stacks of items, we are not guaranteed to get every single item. There is still a small chance that we won't get, for example, any fire charges or something like that. And if you're sorting them out, what's going to happen is because it doesn't pick up any additional fire charges when it's actually trading, then the minecart is going to come along this line and it's going to have no fire charges actually in the system. And because of that, what's going to happen is it's going to go along all of these and it's only going to go into this final slot here. And because of that, there could be two hopper minecarts stacked on top of each other, which could potentially break the system. Because of that, we're going to need to add in one more rail line. This rail line is basically going to only act if none of these item filters pick up any items whatsoever, which means that the minecart above it is completely empty. Then instead of it going to an unloader, it's just going to go straight and get broken. So how that's going to happen is basically from the end right here, we're going to have a powered rail, and it's going to simply take that minecart all the way around, and then we're simply going to drop it right here into the first one because this one is the closest. And we can just do this with normal rails, and we can just power this first one with like a lever or something. And since this rail is facing the wrong direction now, if I simply power it real quick, it should turn directions. And now if I was to send a hopper minecart down the system, it wouldn't trigger any of the item sorters. So instead, it would just skip every single one, and this represents that odd chance where that happens, and it would go right down into this hopper after breaking. Now this left side needs the same ordeal that we did to the right, but since there is this rail line in the way, it's a little bit more complicated. We'll come out two blocks, then we'll come out one more, and then start our ascent up, just like this. That is going to be a total of four powered rails, just like this, and a normal rail. Then we'll turn, and we'll have two more powered rails, and then we'll come up. Then we'll have two normal rails coming up again. Then we'll come out one more block, another normal rail. Then we'll come straight over, come up one more block just like this and we should come straight above this chamber right here which is another one of these breaking chambers and we'll just come out two blocks have a two block barricade and then have normal rails coming straight down like this then we'll grab 
uh, lever, and we'll go ahead and put it right here, and that should power both these rails. Now, if I have an empty hopper minecart go on this side, that should skip every single one of those sorters, and it should come all the way in, and we can see right here, I forgot to switch this rail line. This is why making sure all these rail lines are facing the correct direction is so important. So make sure, after doing it, I did it, so now its default is that way, so it's going to skip going into this tube. We'll go ahead and try that one more time. We'll sit it on its way. It'll come all the way down and around. It should go up there, up and around, and straight down, and it should break. That is exactly what we want. And then you can go all the way in here and go ahead and grab those minecarts out of that hopper right there. All right, now it is time to set up each one of these different item filters. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need a certain amount of each different type of item. Most of the items, you're going to need 23 of each different type. But Ender Pearls, since they stack to 16, you only need 9. And then you're going to need 52 of some sort of renamed, or at least some item that's never going to go through the system as a filter item. So here I got sticks that are renamed as filter, because no sticks named filter is ever going to come through the system, because that could potentially break it in the future. So now what you need to do is you need to figure out what items are you primarily going to sort for. In other words, which items are you always going to want to sort with this piglin farm? Like I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, in order to make this as compact and, and as fast as possible, you are only sorting out 10 items at any one given time. So you need to figure out of all these different items that the piglins will trade, which 10 are you most interested in? So let's say, for example, I am most interested in gravel, soul sand, blackstone, Crying Obsidian and Obsidian. I'm interested in all the blocks. I'm also interested in all the quartz. Uh, I'm also interested in all the iron, all the string, all the bricks. And I am also interested in all the ender pearls. So these are all the items that I want to get every single time. The other thing to think about is which items are you all right to get sometimes. So I need to figure that out. Which of these am I alright getting sometimes? I'm alright getting nether bricks sometimes. I'm alright getting ender pearls sometimes. And I'm alright getting strings sometimes. You need to have as many sometimes items as many as your uh, sometimes to never items. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to match these up. So anytime I'm not getting pearls, I'm probably going to get fire charges. Anytime I'm not getting bricks, I'm probably going to get leather. Anytime I'm not getting string... I'm probably going to get arrows. So now I'm just going to line this up here. So these are my these are basically my trade-offs. Now the reason that is important is each side only has a certain number of sorters. So here I have seven sorters, and there I have six sorters. So whatever items are on this side, whichever item is on this seven sorter side, has to be one of the five different items in this hopper right here. Whatever item is over on this side with only six different options, one of those six different options is not going to be in this hopper right here. And you basically just have to play around to figure out exactly what do you want and what you are willing to give up. So if I look at my inventory, I see I want gravel every time, I want most of these every time, and I'm probably just going to split them basically 50-50 between the two different sides. This will go on my sixth side, this will go on my seventh side. And I got blackstone, gravel, all these. And then I will probably put string on this side. I will put uh, nether bricks on that side. And I'll put ender pearls on this side. Which means I'm also going to have fire charges on this side. And it also means I'm going to have leather on this side. And string on this side. So right here I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So right here I got my 6th side and I got my 7th side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my six side. I'm going to go ahead and label each one of these sorters. If you don't label them now, you can always label them later. But it is extremely helpful to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to make this first one gravel. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gravel in the first item slot. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill the next four slots in with item filters. Then I'm going to put the next one as crying obsidian. I'll put crying obsidian. And the next four as item filters. Once you do this for every single one down there, you're then going to go back in this hopper and take these five. And take the next five out. There should be five remaining that is on purpose. Then, like you did on the first half, you're going to do the same thing on the second half. You're going to want to label each one of these. And the order that these go into the sorter doesn't really matter. 
So even though I have them lined up like this in my inventory, if I wanted, I could have string go into this first one. And I could have soul sand go into the second one and so on. Now once you have all your different item filters set, you can go and check real quick to make sure all these different repeaters are turned on. They should have turned on. If one is turned off, then just go back and double check. Likely you are just simply missing like a comparator or a redstone torch or something simple like that. This is a great time to check and make sure that your redstone is working properly and that you should have only gotten five of each of these different item types. Now once you have done that, you can come down here to the bottom, and here's where our storage area is going to be. Now in the layout or size of this actual build, I went ahead and made plenty of room for you to have many double chests. So for each one of your actual sorters, there's actually two different spots for that item. Since we are doing quadruple speed hopper unloading, that it means that string will be unloaded by all four of these hoppers. And that the next one, which is soul sand, would be unloaded by all four of those hoppers and the same thing would go for blackstone and so on now the one secret about the actual sorting system down here is that not all of the items have to be unloaded at four times hopper speed the secret is while we did set them all up so they're all capable of being unloaded at four times hopper speed only the blackstone and the gravel will ever be sorted fast enough that they actually need four times hopper speed at all all the other items can work at two times hopper speed unloading. So you can easily save some iron and go back and just take off half these hoppers. And that way when you actually set up your sorting system, most of your items end up in this front area right here. The only two items that you're going to have to worry about or actually have a back area of sorting would be your gravel and blackstone. And those would require a four times hopper speed. Now that we've gotten our sorting system portion all laid out with the items and categorized correctly, it is time to actually get the minecarts categorized correctly. So like I've mentioned multiple times, these hoppers right here are going to be inputting the five items we are sorting from this side. And the same goes on the other side. Basically, when the minecart comes past, it's going to be filled up with only uh, one type of item. And that means that minecart is only ever going to have one singular type of item. Basically, being a sorting system within a sorting system, per to say. So, how I would recommend doing this is simply come to each end of your system and put a barrel at the end here. The reason is, if you're going to ever switch them out, it's nice to just have all your items laid out. So, on this right side is where I have my seven different types of items. I'm going to put all those different types of items in this barrel right here. And there should be seven types with five items of each. And then on the left side, I'm going to have six items, five of each. And I'm going to put that in this barrel right here. And the order of this doesn't matter, even if it's not the same order that you have them laid out here for the actual sorting. So I'm going to come to one of these barrels, and I'm going to say, which five of these items do I want to start out by sorting? I'm going to say I'm going to start sorting soul sand, blackstone, obsidian. Uh, I'm going to sort string, and I'm also going to sort arrows. So that means I'm not going to sort nether bricks or leather, which is fine. Then the easiest way to do this is to simply set up your inventory so it's empty, and you're just going to have five in a row just like this for all of them. And then you're going to have an extra five here to the side. Now, when you get to every single hopper, you do need to make sure you put the order in the exact same for every time. So I'll have arrows first, then obsidian, blackstone, soul sand, and string. So if we go to the next one, I'm going to have arrows first, obsidian, blackstone, arrow, uh, soul sand, string. Next one, arrow, obsidian, blackstone, soul sand, string, and so on. And this is where laying your inventory out like this is really helpful because it's a whole lot easier to see what the correct order of all these items are supposed to be if you leave them in a layout like that, or if you just had five, 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 five of each item, and then just individually click them in. So that means that this right side is configured to the sorting system properly. And now if we go to this other side, I'm going to go ahead and select my five different ones that I'm going to be sorting out. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my inventory here, just to get all the items out, and then I can just easily shift click all the items right on into that hopper again taking extra care and time to make sure the order of these items is the exact same for every single one of these hoppers if this order is not the exact same as all these other hoppers at any point that will break your system so spend time and make sure you get this right
if you are building the system like I am out in the open, if a gas gets killed over top or any type of item gets accidentally dropped right above this farm, right over top any of these hoppers, that will break your system at some point. So when it's all said and done, make sure to put a roof over this portion when we are completely done. That way you ensure that no mobs or no other items accidentally get into these hoppers. Because if this part breaks, everything else will break with it. All right, so now we are finally at the point where we can put in all the complicated redstone that makes this entire farm or sorting system work. Now, before we do all that, I know getting mobs in can be a hassle. So now is actually the perfect time to do that before we start putting in all the complicated redstone that could get in the way when you're trying to put the mobs in the system. Now, I'm going to start with the LA since that's going to be the easiest. Now, the LA is going to have its output chest going to be right here to the right of where the actual mobs are. Right here uh, on, in this actual hopper itself is where the allay is going to be held. Now in order to get the allay here, the easiest way to do that is just make a little box in here. And then just get an allay to the nether, which have fun with that. And then get the allay in the actual minecart itself. So getting the allay in the minecart can be a bit challenging. But if I simply move the minecart slightly... And then just get an LA. I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give the LA a slab, and then drop a slab on that minecart. It's gonna get close, and it's gonna get in it, and then it's gonna throw me back to slab. Great. And we can replace that slab with any other item later. So I'm just gonna slide the LA straight forward so it gets in there. Then we go ahead and clean up the area around it. We're gonna put an upper slab here, and then come up two blocks, and then just go ahead and grab a normal piston and set that ready to face straight down. Now since I gave the LA an item, I can actually damage it, so I can just go ahead and break the minecart without any fear of damaging LA, and I can go ahead and push the slab down with a piston just like that. Now if I remove all the glass around the LA, you can see the LA is trapped in there, and if I throw any items, the LA will pick it up, and it will drop it in this chest when I get close enough. There we go, you can see it dropped it right there. We're going to be able to completely automate this with a note block later on. And you can, if you want, go ahead and just take the item out of the LA inventory. And we will give it a proper item to sort later on. Now right here on this lodestone is where the piglins are going to be doing all their trading. Now before bringing the piglins in, we want to lock them in. So we're going to create a wall right here. We need an, an inward facing piston just like this. And then right here, instead of having a block here, we're going to have an air block there and just surround this with glass blocks. The reason is right here, whenever the piglins are done trading, this piston is going to extend all the other items forward, which at that point is mostly non-stackable items or items you decide not to sort that cycle. And those are going to be quickly burned in lava to keep your game from lagging out from too many items being on the ground. Now we can go up one more block right here, but there is one issue. Right now we have a glass block on top of this slab. Weirdly enough, allays need an air block above them in order to be able to properly collect items and sort them out automatically for you. The weird thing is, because the allay is in the block, in the slab, it doesn't count this slab towards that there's a block in the air above it. So instead of putting a glass block here, we are instead going to have a trap door right on the inside with the piglins and then we'll use a redstone block to permanently power it up that way there is no blocks here but the piglins are still contained in this little chamber right here now when it comes to getting piglins in that hole there's really a lot of personal preferences on how you want to do this you can either not wear gold armor and have them chase you or my personal favorite is to just give them gold and then just give them a nice little nudge right on into that hole and the crazy thing is, since we are utilizing the bug that drastically increases the speed in which the piglins can trade their items, using basically by moving a gold block to anger them mid-trade, this allows this entire farm and all the gold that it goes through to be able to operate with only three piglins. If you have more piglins, that will work fine too. It's not going to slow the system down at all. But if you want to save yourself from a bunch of hassle, 
then you only really need three piglins in this farm in order for it to actually work at its full potential. Now, once you get the piglins in there, of course, we want to keep them in there. So go ahead and grab a stair, and we need a downward facing stair like this. And we want the uh, flat side to be at the same side as the trap door. Then going into the stair, we are going to have three droppers. The reason we have three droppers is because each of these droppers are going to be firing just above how fast one singular piglin can trade. And then by the time the minecarts are ready to go, the piglins will have caught up to how fast these three droppers have dropped or traded with these piglins. So these three droppers combined make the perfect trading speed. Now in order to automatically fill those with all the gold ingots we need, we are going to use three hoppers directly like this. And you might be wondering how we are going to connect these all up so that they are all evenly going to be distributed the gold. And we are going to do that with a chest boat. So if you have fences on either side, that's going to force the chest boat to be directly in the middle between all three of those hoppers. And then you can have as many hoppers as you want going directly into the side of this chest boat. And if you simply had like a chest full of gold and you simply chucked that right into one of these one of these hoppers that will go directly into this chest boat and that will be distributed between all three of these droppers. So now for the redstone wiring, we're going to start all the way up here at the top and here is going to be our on off switch. If you're wondering, up is on and down is going to be off. I'm going to keep it in the off position to begin with. The other thing we're going to have is I'm going to go ahead and have a block here with a comparator on it and that's going to go straight into a solid block come to the other side on the side of that solid block we're going to have a redstone torch because that's not really going to interfere with the hopper mine carts when they're in this chamber and that's going to go into some redstone dust and we're just going to have that come up a little staircase up here and that's going to connect to the redstone line coming from this lever right here and this lever is going to have a repeater here on four ticks going into redstone dust then it's going to come up one more block right here with redstone dust on top and then it's going to come down two blocks just like this with redstone dust on top of each of those from this lowest redstone dust we're going to come 180 from that and then we're going to have a sideways facing piston this piston is going to be pushing a redstone block and we'll come out to another two blocks and have an inward facing piston right here now if we come directly below that this is where we're going to have our two hoppers facing each other for our etho hopper clock and in one of them just go ahead and throw 42 of any type of item you want that is basically going to be operating as our timer functioning to go back and forth between the piglins trading and then the hopper minecarts actually collecting all the items. That way we're constantly cycling through and making sure that not too many items are sitting there at once and there's no chance of any of the items that we want to keep are despawning. Now from here we're going to have a comparator that's going to power a piece of redstone dust here and coming to the other side we'll have a comparator right here powering right on into that block. Now if we come straight up here, we're going to have a glass block here, and a solid block here, with a comparator here on subtract mode. That comparator is going straight into a block. With a block here to the side, you can have two bits of redstone dust right here. Now we're going to need to power each one of these three droppers, so we're going to want to have a solid block for each in front of each of those, so if there's any glass blocks like there was for me, go ahead and break those and replace them. Then I'm going to come out one more block from each of those. You might have to place a temporary block or two. And we're going to have one bit of redstone dust on each of them. Now I want the redstone dust to be facing straight in, not like this. So I'm going to go ahead and have a couple more blocks right here in order to divide them all up. I'm going to place three blocks to connect all these up and three bits of redstone dust. And then also from this comparator, whenever it's on, that is going to be powering a four tick uh, repeater coming off here to the left, and that's going to go straight into a solid block with a redstone torch. Now the next system we are about to build basically gets triggered at the end of the cycle, so after all the hopper minecarts have gone through and collected all the items, this is going to activate this piston, and it's going to burn all the remaining items, which at that point should be only non-stackable items that you're not interested in sorting, or it's going to be the other stackable items you're not interested in sorting either. So how we're going to do this, if we come right back to this side, if we come to this first uh, comparator we have here, the comparator should be turned off because all the other ones, all the items are in this right-hand hopper. We're going to come down and have 
uh, solid block right here with redstone dust. Come off here to the side. I think we're going to have a redstone torch right there. We'll have a dropper with a hopper. And go ahead and throw in any item. It does not matter. Then we'll come down one block from here. And out one block. There we'll have a comparator. That's going to go straight into a solid block. Come out to the side. And here we'll have a repeater on one tick. That's going to go straight into a line of blocks. And we can go ahead and break that glass. Have a line of redstone dust coming all the way out. And down. And into straight into a block. And a line of redstone dust coming in. And then you can go ahead and grab a button if you want, and you can put that right here. And basically what the system is going to do, and you can simulate with this button, is whenever the system activates, it's going to turn on this piston, which is going to push all those items right on into that open gap that we left earlier when setting up the piglin pin. And that open gap is right here. Now, we are going to power a dispenser that's going to shoot a lava bucket in this hole for just one quick second. And we're going to do that using an observer. So whenever this repeater turns on and off, we are going to turn that on off into two quick one tick pulses. And that's going to activate and deactivate this dispenser. And in this dispenser, of course, just have a lava bucket. So if we want to simulate this real quick, if I break this redstone torch and then replace it, we should see lava get dispensed real quick and then taken back in before it has time to flow. Even though we are in the nether, the system should work, and it should make sure that your piglins don't accidentally get burnt to a crisp. So you might remember we placed this redstone torch here earlier, and we're going to continue off of that. So coming right off of that hopper tube that we did at the very beginning of this tutorial, we're going to have a repeater here on three ticks, and we'll have two bits of redstone dust right there connecting to that redstone torch. Coming to the other side of this, we are going to come down a total of three blocks. So there is one, two, three. And we're going to come in one block and then out to another two. We're going to go ahead and have a redstone dust on all these blocks we just placed. And then you can go ahead and have a redstone torch here. We're going to come down one block. And here we're going to have an inward facing piston. And then we'll have a bit of redstone dust right on top of that. Here is where we're going to have another etho hopper clock. I promise this is the last one. And then we'll come out another three blocks, break the first two, and have another normal piston facing inward. Then you can come right underneath it, and here's where you're going to have two hoppers facing directly right on into each other. And go ahead and put six random items you don't care about in that system. Now we're going to do the basic etho hopper clock stuff. So that's going to be coming right down here and having a comparator face directly in with redstone dust on this side. If I come to the other side, it's going to be the same ordeal. Come out, have a comparator facing in, and redstone dust right there. That's going to start this etho hopper clock off and on, off and on. Now, once you get that final bit of redstone dust in, your etho hopper clock will be going back and forth. So if you want to not hear any noise while we do the rest of the building, just go ahead and power one side like I'm doing here with a redstone block. So now we're going to come to the other side of this etho hopper clock, and we're going to have two blocks right here. Redstone dust on the right side and redstone repeater on the left. Now this redstone repeater is going to go straight into a block with a redstone torch. Now off the side of this redstone torch, it's going to be powering a bit of a redstone dust right here. And it's also going to be powering a repeater right here on two ticks. We're going to have a redstone torch right here, come up one block. And then we're going to create a redstone torch tower coming all the way up the side until it meets this fence gate all the way up here. And it should meet the fence gate when this redstone torch is off. And then have a solid block right above that. Then coming straight back to where we started. From this bit of redstone dust that's powering into this block. We're going to have a repeater right here on one tick. Going straight into a block right here. We'll have a, a torch right there. Coming right up to a block. With another redstone torch. Right into a block and another redstone torch right there. This redstone torch, if we come straight up, we can see that is going to be switching this rail right here back and forth. And that is how we're going to be specifying whether we want the minecart to go to the right or to the left. Now if we come right back down here, we're going to come to this other side. It's going to be a block here with a redstone torch. Same ordeal as we did on the right side. We're going to have a redstone dust here. Come up two blocks. Right here we're going to have a repeater on two ticks. And we'll have a redstone torch with a block right on top of that. Then we're going to come right up the side with another redstone torch tower. It's going to come all the way up. And it's going to also power this uh, redstone. This it's also going to power 
this fence gate here with a solid block. Now, if we follow this redstone torch tower back here to the bottom, we can see here is a turned off redstone torch. If we come off to the side of this with redstone dust, that's going to go straight into a solid block. And then right here, we're going to have a repeater on four ticks. Coming over to the other side, we're going to have the same thing over here, except since there's only two blocks, it's just going to be a redstone dust and repeater on four ticks. So there we have two repeaters on four ticks going to the same block. We'll have a redstone torch there that's going into a solid block. And we'll have a red to redstone torch here to the side. That's going to be powering this powered rail. And a redstone torch here to the side. And that is going to be powering a note block that we're going to have right on top of it. This note can be any note you want. And this is simply going to make the LA drop their non-stackable item when they have it. Next, coming back to our major etho hopper clock here, we are not quite done with this yet. We're going to put a solid block right here, keeping these two bits of redstone dust from connecting. One more block right there, and then a redstone torch right there. This redstone torch is going to be right in front of a dropper, and it's going to have a repeater right on top of it. And that's going straight into a solid block with a hopper going right into that dropper. In this hopper, go ahead and throw five, some sort of random item you don't care about. This basically means that this Etho Hopper Clock will go a total of five times, and then it will stop, and then the piglins will keep on trading. This is our counting system. From here, we want this counting system to actually be able to turn the Etho Hopper Clock on and off. So we're going to do that using a comparator. This comparator is going to come straight to a block, have a redstone torch right off to the side of that, solid block right above that, solid block right here to the side, redstone dust. This redstone dust is going to come down and inwards towards this piston, one block, and then you can have a solid block right in front of that piston. Then right here, we're going to have this top layer of redstone dust come out one more block, have another piece of redstone dust, we're going to have a downwards facing dropper, an upwards facing dropper, and in this top dropper, go ahead and put a wooden sword, or some sort of other non-stackable item. Then we're going to have a glass block right here, we'll have a comparator, that's going to go straight into a solid block. We'll have another solid block here with a piece of redstone dust. And you have a torch right here to the side and a torch right up here. Then we're going to come all the way around here back to where we have our comparator from our counter. We are going to take a redstone torch signal off that. Then we're going to have a sticky piston facing inwards. And that sticky piston is going to have another gold ore on it. We'll have a redstone torch on the side of that. And then we can come right out from this down one block and here you can have a repeater on one tick and redstone dust this tiny circuit right here is simply going to move this gold back and forth and that's going to allow us to trade with our piglins super quickly now we're going to come from this bottom redstone torch we're going to come down two blocks go ahead and have a bit of redstone dust come out to the side one then that's going to go straight into a block then here we'll have a repeater on four ticks that's going straight into another block. Off the side of this block, we'll have a redstone torch. From this redstone torch, it's going to come down two blocks. You can break that first. It's going to come along parallel with this redstone line here. You don't want the two to connect, so put a block there. And then we're simply going to come up this uh, block chain all the way up here until it's going directly into this block right here. Next, we're going to come up to our upper redstone torch. And we're going to have a block on top of that. Of a block to the side with a redstone dust it's going to go straight into a block and then we're going to have basically this redstone dust line except using redstone torches and that's going parallel with that actual system come to the other side redstone torch block redstone torch block redstone torch block and then here we can go ahead and just use redstone dust up here and it's going to come all the way up till it gets past the torch and then it will come down one block just like this then from here, we are going to have a dropper facing in, come out two blocks, dropper facing in the other dropper, go ahead and throw a stick or some sort of other stackable item in this right dropper. Then we're going to come down one block right here, go ahead and grab a comparator, have that facing inward just like that. Then go ahead and take this redstone line all the way around and go ahead and connect it up with this redstone block here and just line that bit of redstone dust all the way around. Now, if you see this comparator turn on, then go ahead and disconnect and reconnect this bit of redstone dust. The final thing redstone-wise to do is to come all the way to this back side to where we have this two bit of redstone dust and this repeater on three ticks. 
and we're going to create a bit of a redstone line and this redstone line is going to come all the way down and it's going to curve all the way around until it connects right up to where we got this lever right there now at this point your system technically is working but there is a couple things we put in place while building this that we need to redo or undo in order to get the system ready or primed in order to make it work the first thing to do is the allay we never actually gave the allay any item to sort go ahead and give it an enchanted book uh give it a potion of fire resistance or give it some iron boots that way it actually has something it's going to be sorting I'm also going to put a block to the side to make sure the LA has to throw the item in that hopper. And then also a good idea is since LA's are going to, over time, give you a lot of non-stackable items, go ahead and give it a little bit more storage, like at least two double chests, in order to hold all the items. The LA won't necessarily pick up all the non-stackable items, but over the time you are running the sorter, you will get doubles and doubles of chest full of those non-stackable items. Another nice thing to do is might as well make a floor right here. This is basically the AFK floor. If you're going to AFK anywhere, I would probably recommend you AFK right here. You could put trapdoors or something over this chest so you can still reach or access it. But right here is a prime location. That way you can see the piglins if anything go wrong there. And you can also very easily switch back and forth which item you want the LA to actually trade or pick up. The other smart thing to do is put a block in front of the LA to make sure the LA doesn't see you. If the LA sees you, then sometimes it won't actually drop its non-stackable item until you're close enough to it. So it is a smart idea to go ahead and put a glass or solid block in front of the LA to make sure the LA doesn't know you're there and basically will only listen to the note block on when to drop a new item. Now we also need to go through and make sure we take out all the different levers or redstone blocks we put in place to make sure the farm didn't accidentally operate while we were in the middle of constructing it. So for example, down here, my etho hopper clock, I have a redstone block here. This was triggering it. I'm going to go ahead and break that. The etho hopper clock might trigger once, but then it should stop. If it doesn't stop, then just let it keep going. And if it still doesn't stop, then that means you are missing a piece of redstone dust or repeater or torch and go back through and watch that section the other place we put redstone blocks if we come right down here we did have a lever here which you should have removed when moving that bit of redstone dust if we come right down here to the middle there was a redstone block here to keep this line powered go ahead and remove that the other thing that might have happened is one or both of your minecarts might have accidentally gone once or twice. So check and see if they have one or two different items in their the minecart's inventory. If it has two different items, then simply that means you're going to have to go return half the items back to where they belong. Because these chest minecarts should only have one of each. So that means in the first one here, and if you're ever not certain, check this hopper to the left. So this first one's going to be the fourth uh, item, it's going to be the third one next, and then it's going to be the second, and then it's going to be the first. And then if I come over here, it's going to be the first, it's going to be the second, it's going to be the third, and it's going to be the fourth. These are different things to check before starting your system, because if it isn't set up right to begin with, it's going to make it a lot harder to set it up properly the second time around. Because the second time around, these items could be literally anywhere in your build. Now, if I simply get on out of here, we can go ahead and double check to make sure we have chest mine carts in these systems over here, and we have a chest mine cart in the system over there. That is good. Those are going to go get our extra uh, hopper mine carts that are gone through the entire system. In this dropper and dispenser, make sure you have 18 hopper mine carts. That's nine in each of the dropper and dispensers, and you're going to need another 18. Uh, hopper mine carts in the other side dropper and dispenser those are extremely important and make sure you have 18 the 18 will never run out and those will be recycled over and over again now that i'm over here i'm again going to check all the rails make sure they are all powered where they should be powered make sure they all connect and aren't going nowhere it's going to keep coming all the way up along it's going to go in this tube go straight down both those fence gates are closed and the final and most important thing to check is to make sure that each of these hoppers have some item in it and they are in the correct order. If they are not in the same order, all of these different five hoppers on this side and the five hoppers on this side are 
or not in the same order, then your system will not work. Once you feel confident that your system is set up correctly, you can go ahead and open up the chest boat and go ahead and fill it with all the gold ingots you want to give the system a good proper test. The nice thing is the system will not work unless there's gold in it. Because of this comparator right here, basically if the comparator turns off, that means there's no gold left in the system and it will shut itself off automatically. And it is smart anytime you are loading the system in when it is completely empty or dry to make sure each of these droppers have at least a stack and a half of gold before turning on the system for the first time. So I'm going to turn on the system and then I'm going to turn off and that's going to make sure only one cycle happens. So I can see the piglins are trading super fast. Here comes the first hopper minecarts. If I look at the hopper minecart, I can see it has all obsidian. If I look at the other side, it has all quartz. Look at the next one, it has all ender pearls. And I see the next one, it has all iron nuggets. We can see it's trading, it's doing the left side first, then it's doing the right side. And you can see right there, right there, the rails line is switching back and forth. The hopper minecarts that are coming from the left are going to the left side. The hopper minecarts that are going from the right are going to the right side. That is extremely important, and that should be working just like shown. And if we come over here to the shulker box loaders and unloaders, we can see a lot of them are active. And they should be unloading items directly into our chest. So we should see, yes, got some blackstone. And if I come to the central storage point, I should see, do I got any string? String is coming into the system. And this, to me, looks like the system is working. Now, after running this farm for a couple minutes in your world, the one final thing that is extremely important to check is to make sure that your hopper minecarts are coming back in your droppers here. The dropper and dispenser, the dispenser should mostly or almost always be completely full, but the dropper might not necessarily be completely full. This does not mean that your system's broken. Sometimes it just means that you need to go ahead and put a button here temporarily and send the minecart on its way. What this is going to do is it's going to go back and it's going to make sure it picks up any hopper minecarts that might still be in the system. What happens is basically this chest minecart goes off fairly frequently when the system's running. But when the system turns off, the system is not, of course, running, and so the hopper minecarts that were up there or doing the last previous cycle that you had the system running for, those hopper minecarts are still up there. So you did not lose those hopper minecarts if you're missing some, but make sure to press, put some buttons down there, press them, and see if you get all your hopper minecarts back. And you can see right here, I pressed the button once, and that got me all my hopper minecarts. So I know I did not lose any hopper minecarts. I know my chest minecart right here is set up correctly with first, second, third, fourth, looking exactly as I preset it earlier. If you guys have any other questions or comments about this farm, let me know down in the comment section below. You can also join my Discord or join the beta testers if you want to start beta testing future farms and builds and tutorials that's going to happen on this channel. It's completely free. Just click the link in my description. But that's really all there is to it. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. This has been Rocket Builder, and I'll see you all in the next one.